In this updated LumaFusion tutorial, you're gonna learn how to edit videos on iPhone and iPad using the latest LumaFusion updates step by step, including the awesome new features since our last tutorial and how you can easily use them. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're seeing value in this video, make sure you're giving it a thumbs up. It really makes a huge difference. And all the links to everything I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. Let's jump into it. LumaFusion is one of our top picks when it comes to best editing apps on iPhone and Android, and has recently gone through a major update with version three. It packs in even more pro level functionality, so it can definitely get overwhelming for new or beginning users, but don't worry. In this video, I'm gonna take you through a complete edit step by step. And once we're done, I'll also share with you my top three tools to easily level up your videos in LumaFusion or any other video editor. As we go through, let me know down in the comments, what's your biggest tip for new users of LumaFusion? It could be something from this video or something that you've picked up from playing around yourself. Now, quick heads up before we get into it, we're not gonna be covering off on every single feature in here. There's a lot in there. So I'm gonna show you the key stuff that you need to know to get the most out of the app and to start getting great results as fast as possible. Also to help you speed up your editing, I'm gonna be taking you through here using the primal video method, the most efficient way to edit your videos down with minimal wasted time or rework. And I'll share more about that one a little later in the video. But if you're an impatient person, there is a link in the description box below where you can download your free copy now. Okay, so here we are in LumaFusion. Now I'm gonna be running through here using an iPad. Process is gonna be exactly the same on an iPhone as well. Just the interface is gonna be optimized for the smaller screen. Now the first thing I like to do in any editing app is to go down to the settings area here. Just make sure all the settings are correct before we actually start getting into our project. So we're gonna press on settings here. Now we're not gonna run through everything in here because there is a lot in here, but I would suggest that you go through and see what kinds of things that you have access to to customize up for your editing style. So you can see on this first tab here, we can control things like the default duration that our photos, titles, and transitions are when we create them. Now if we jump across to the preferences one here, this is where we can set up our defaults for our projects. So we can specify our frame rate in here, and there's a lot of different ones to choose from. Our default aspect ratio, whether we're gonna be creating a widescreen video, a nine by 16 portrait, a one by one, a four by three, lots of different aspect ratios to choose from in here. I'm gonna go widescreen. Likewise, the color space as well. If we go down here, we can see that I have show touches enabled so that you can see when I am actually selecting something here on screen. And if we keep coming down here, you can see that we now have the ability in this latest update, version three, to enable external drive editing as well. So if you've got any video footage on an external drive that you're plugging into your iPad or to your iPhone, then you can enable that here. And the other one I wanna point out up here is under cleanup, if you've got a few projects under your belt and you're finding that you're running out of storage on your device, then you can come up here and you can clean up things like your temporary files or any of your cached media or unused media. You can easily remove those from within this settings area. So let's back out of this one now. And we can see down the bottom here, it says press plus to create your first project. We can either tap on the screen here or we can come down the bottom here and hit plus. But what that's gonna do is allow us to create our new project. Up here, we can give our project a name. We can manually choose our frame rate, the aspect ratio, and the color space just by selecting on these. Or what I find is really powerful is just to leave it as based on the first clip, and it's going to auto detect these settings based on the first video clip that we import into our timeline. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna come up here to this little button here, the plus to create our project. And then we're opened up inside of our project where we can see our timeline down the bottom here. So quick overview of the interface. This up here is our import area, our media and assets area. You can see currently it's looking at the photos folder. I can press on this and we have access to our photos, files, imported files, uh, titles and transitions and things we can access from in here as well. We can also come over the side here and choose import media if we're not finding the clips that we're after and that are saved elsewhere on our device. The big black box up here is our playback window. This is where we'll be able to preview our edit as we work on it. And down the bottom here, we've got access to our settings, also our layouts. What's really cool about LumaFusion is that you can actually customize this stuff up. So if we press on this layout button down here, there are preset or default layouts that you can switch between to maximize the screen real estate that you've got or where you're 
you're at in your editing process. I'm just gonna go back to the default one here. And the other cool addition in LumaFusion now is you can actually customize this up further and you can resize these panels to match what you're actually doing or to give you more screen real estate for the tasks that you're performing. So we can just come and grab and hold on the intersection between the different panels and we can move this around to again, maybe give us more timeline space or make our preview and playback window much bigger. So I think this is an awesome addition. Again, something you only really see in desktop video editing software. In the middle along the bottom here, you've got a lot of your regular editing functions, which you'll see as we go through. Things like a delete button, the ability to split your clip, paste, all of that is down the bottom middle here. Down the bottom left here, we have the ability to turn on or off our volume levels for the different audio and video tracks that we have. So you can see that that's just appeared here. So we can turn that on or off. Likewise, with the next one across, we're able to turn on or off our video and audio layer settings as well. And then the last one down the bottom left-hand corner will bring up our project window so that we can switch between different projects and make new ones. So I'll double tap on this to get back into our project there now. All right, now it's time to import our video footage. Now, because we'd specified in our project settings here that we want our project to be based off our primary video footage, you wanna go ahead and import your primary footage first. So I actually have a clip here called primary footage. I'm gonna come up the top here, tap and hold on it and drag it down into my timeline. And that clip is now down there. Now, if you've got multiple clips that you're using as your primary story or primary footage in your video, then you can go ahead and drag those down as well. So now that we've got some footage down the bottom here, we can tap and swipe across to scrub through our footage, move back and forth through it. We can pick up our clips down the bottom by tapping and holding on them, and we can move them around, swap their position, again to build out our story. Now a cool new feature in the latest version of LumaFusion, which is a paid add-on, is the ability to synchronize and to use multi-camera clips. So you could just drag down your second camera angle down onto your timeline and edit your footage down this way, switching between the two different clips. Or if we go ahead and remove that now from our timeline, by selecting that clip and just pressing the trash can down the bottom. The new feature, we can come back up the top here. We can select multiple clips if we check this box and pick our multiple camera angles. So we've got our primary footage and camera two. We can then come down here to create multi-cam clip. Let's call it multi-cam, that's fine. Let's go okay on that. And we now have the ability here to sync up and to edit down our multiple camera angles just by tapping on these different number boxes here that coincide with our different camera angles. So I'm not gonna dive into this in too much detail in this tutorial, but just know that that's there and it's super powerful if you're gonna be using multiple camera angles. All right, so we've imported our primary footage. The next thing that we're gonna do is start to trim it down. So we can see at the start of this video here, I'm just getting ready before I start talking and then I start about here. And you can normally see with the audio there uh, where I actually do start speaking. So what we wanna do is remove this start piece. So we wanna select our clip here. And as with anything video editing, there's multiple different ways to do things. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways so that you know how the tools work so that you can edit your videos down with whichever method is going to be the fastest for you. So I've got the clip selected. I can come over here to this handle here on the left. I can press and hold on it and I can drag the start point of that clip back to wherever we want to start. So let's just say around here somewhere. When I let go, the video is now going to start at that point. Likewise, I then go across and do the same at the end of the video. So if we come across to here, we can select our clip. We can click and drag on this end piece and let's just choose where we want this video to finish, which is when I finish talking. Okay, so that's just using the handles on the start and finish of our clips. Let's say that we wanna remove this big chunk down here where I am not talking at all. So let's come back to where we wanna add a cut. So let's just say that I start the take here. I can come down to the pair of scissors here and tap on those, and that's gonna cut our clip at that point. So we now have two clips. So now we could come and select this side of the clip. We could grab the handle here, and we could drag that back, and you can see that it's pulling the clip afterwards along with it. So let's say we wanted that to finish here. Then we've now removed all of that footage. Now I'm gonna undo this because there's another way that we can do this as well. So let's say that again, we wanted to bring our footage back to here and remove all of this stuff in here. We can just add another cut in our timeline here using the scissors. We can select this clip and we can press the trash can to delete it and it will close up that gap and move our other clip here back 
after the first one. So you can see there's a few different ways to do things. Now you can speed up this process by just swiping along on your timeline here and using a two finger tap near the playback head, near that blue line, and it will go ahead and cut your clip at that time as well. So we can go through, we can add cuts, we can select that clip here and press the trash can and that's gone. So LumaFusion does make it really quick to go through and add cuts and to be able to remove clips in our timeline as well. So you wanna go ahead now and remove all of the bad takes, all of the mistakes, anything that you don't wanna have in your finished video project. Once that's done, it's now time to add in any B-roll or overlay footage. So you can see we've got three extra clips here of the switch pod. So I'll start to bring in those now. So I'm gonna click on this one here and drag it down into the timeline where I want it, somewhere around here. And then just like every other clip, we have the ability to use those handles to trim it down. So let's wait here until it starts to rotate somewhere around here. We can then have that clip play through until it spins around, maybe around here. And I might wanna add a cut at that point. So I've got that clip selected, hit the scissors here. It's only going to split that clip. So you can see we've now got two clips here. I could then keep going through and finding the next piece that we want. So maybe it's this point here where we're opening the legs of the tripod. I can add another cut. And if we wanna remove the rest of it, we can just press the trash can. So we now have these two extra little clips in here that we can move around and even put right next to each other if we'd like. So you wanna go ahead and bring in any B-roll, any overlay footage into your edit now. Now, every time you're going through one of these steps, you're playing through your footage, you're hearing what's been said, you're making minor adjustments to, to tweak and adjust your video. You might find you're even removing clips or swapping up the position of them just to make your edit further refined. So the whole thing is always an iterative process as you're playing it through. The next step is to add any titles or text into your video. So I'm going to come back to the start here and we're going to bring up a name card that says Justin Brown. So we could just come down the bottom here to the plus button and choose main title title. The other place that we can do it is up in the top here. If we press on this button here, let's go down to titles. So you can see there's lots of different ones in here to choose from. I'm just going to go ahead and choose a basic one here. Let's go plain white and I'm going to click and drag that down onto the timeline. And just like any other clip, we can extend it out, make it shorter. We can pick it up. We can move it around to where we want it to show up in our video. So it works just the same as your regular video clips too. Now to edit the text, we just want to double tap on it. That's going to open it up, but we can control and configure everything up for this title. So if we double tap on the text here on screen, then up in the top right hand corner, we have our text box. So I can just type in Justin Brown. I can then pick up that text box and I can move it around. I can adjust the size of that text box up and down using the corner pins. Then over on this panel here, we can adjust how it looks. So we can adjust the size here, bigger or smaller. We can also adjust the color of the text, the face color here, we can add uh, shadow as well. So let's increase the shadow distance. You can see we've now got shadow on there too. Maybe add a little bit of blur to that shadow. You can see there's lots of things that we can customize up here. Or there's also some presets at the top here as well. So if there's anything that you like the look of here, then you can use these as presets as well. Or if you create your own preset, based on your fonts and colors and branding, we can actually go ahead, configure all of this up and press the little plus button here. And this will let us save our own title preset. So that next time you wanna use it in your next video, you've already got a preset of everything set up the way you want it. So once you're done, you can get back to your timeline by pressing the little back button up the top here. And we now have our text in the timeline there at that point. Once that's done, the next step is to add in any transitions or effects into your edits. So let's say that we wanted to have a transition for this title to come on screen. So it didn't just appear, that it was coming in a little bit nicer. We can come back up to the T here in the top corner and let's choose transitions. So again, you've got lots of different ones in here to choose from. You've got standard ones like a cross dissolve or cross fade, which we can grab and drag down onto the start of our clip there. And now as we play this through, you can see that that title now fades in. So you've got lots of basic ones, but you've also got some more fancier ones as well. If we hit the undo button there to remove that, let's come down here to, let's go push right. And let's drop that on the start of our clip there. So as we play through this now, that's now gonna come in from the left-hand side of the screen. And let's add one to, as well to the end. So we'll grab this one here, drop it on the end, and that's now gonna go back off screen as well. Now you can also add transitions onto your clips themselves. So let's say instead of just having this footage just hard cut in or appear in, we could add in a flash. 
So let's grab the flash transition again, drop it into the start of that clip. And now as we play through this and that clip comes on, there's a flash and then that clip appears. Now in terms of our content and adding transitions between clips, you can see that there's a cut in the timeline here between these two clips. I wouldn't recommend that you're adding one of these transitions in between two clips that are pretty much the same. Instead, what we do is that we would zoom in on one of the shots, either the first one or the second, to make it look like a secondary camera angle and to break the shot up a bit. So to do that, I would just double tap on one of these clips, the first one or the second one, and I then come down to the bottom left-hand corner here where it says frame and fit. And then in here, we can pinch to zoom to zoom in or reframe our shot. So we're gonna zoom in on it a bit. Let's pull it down a little bit just so it looks a little bit different. And then let's go back and see what this looks like. So we've got our first clip here that's playing through. When we get to this cut, it's going to jump into the zoomed in shot. Now if we double tap on a clip here now just to open back up that effects panel, there's lots of other stuff in here as well. So this is the frame and fit panel that I've shown you where you can rotate and crop and zoom in on your shots. The next one across here, this is your speed control. So if you wanna speed up or slow down your clips, then you can do that in here. I'll just undo that one now. The next one across is a cool new feature in LumaFusion, which is a video stabilizer. So if you've got shaky handheld footage, you can come in here with your clip selected and you can turn on stabilization with a ton of settings and control in here to really dial it in for best results. And the next two across here is your audio and audio effects, which we'll get to soon, and followed by color grading and color effects. Again, we'll get to those two soon. So let's go back out of that one now. Next up, you wanna add in any music or sound effects into your video. So we're gonna come back up the top left-hand corner here, and your music could be showing under music. It could also be showing under photos, files, or imported, depending on how you've copied it over to your iPad. For me, mine are under files, so I'm gonna navigate through and find those now. Music, I've got two music tracks here. And again, to bring that into our timeline, we can press and hold on it drag that down below our video clips and we now have our audio added. Now these behave just the same as a regular video clip. We can pick it up, we can move it around, we can adjust the start and end time using those handles on the start and end and we have the ability to cut our clips too if there's a section that we don't wanna have in it. So I'm gonna go across to the end of our edit here and I'm gonna make sure that our music track finishes when our video finishes. So I'm gonna add a cut here and remove this remaining piece. And then depending on your edit, once again, you wanna play it through and make any minor adjustments and tweak anything, especially if you're gonna be having your video that is cut to the beat of the music. From there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna adjust the volume levels across our edit here. So if we come down the bottom left-hand corner and press on this one here, we can edit our audio really, really quickly, either on a track-by-track -track basis, so an entire video track or entire audio track all at once, once, or we can actually do it on an individual clip by clip basis as well. So I'm gonna press this little button here to mute our music here to start with, because we wanna make sure that we are setting the volume levels correctly on our primary footage or the spoken piece first, and then we'll adjust the music in afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select our first clip. I'm gonna come back to the start of the video here. I'm gonna press play. And what I'm watching for here at this point is our audio bars at this point. You wanna make sure that there's in the green, into the yellow a little bit, but definitely not hitting the red. And we can boost this up or down just using this little slider here. So if I wanna make it louder, you can see that it's getting louder. It's actually hitting the red, which is not good. So we wanna back this down a little bit until it is in just the green and the yellow. So around there somewhere. Now making the adjustment here has actually applied this to every clip that is on this track or in line with this track. So in the case of our B-roll footage here on the track above, we might not want any of the sound that was recorded with those clips, in which case we can just come to this slider and we can turn it all the way down to zero, or we could mute it entirely so that we're not gonna hear any of that. We'll still see those clips playing, but we won't hear the audio that was recorded with it. Now, if you wanna make minor adjustments or you wanna adjust the clip volume levels on a clip by clip basis, then that's where you wanna select your clip, double tap on it, come down the bottom here to audio, and then in here you've got your gain slider to increase increase your volume levels or to lower it down. And again, it's a good idea to do this while you were playing your clip so that you can actually see your audio bars here and you can work out how loud or quiet it needs to be. 
So we're gonna back out of this one now. So now that we have our primary footage all set correctly, we've muted our B-roll footage, then I'm going to adjust our volume levels on our music track. So I'm gonna come back down here to our music track. I'm gonna unmute it. I'm gonna lower this volume down because I know it's going to be too loud. And for us with the videos we create, Depending on the audio track, we're normally sitting around the minus 30, minus 33 mark as a starting point. So the music isn't too loud and you can still hear what I'm saying. So again, it's a matter of adjusting that volume level down, pressing play and seeing how it sounds. Now, ideally here, you are doing this with headphones on so that you can make sure that you can still hear any spoken pieces that are coming through and you're making adjustments either on the entire track or you're doing it on a clip by clip basis. Now, if we double tap on this clip to open it up, in our control panel area here. Again, we've got our gain control to raise or lower the volume. But up here under configuration, we also have what's called audio ducking. And you can see here that I've currently got it set to auto. So what this will do is this will automatically adjust the volume levels based on other clips we're using in the timeline. So if someone is speaking, then it's going to lower the volume on our music automatically. And then when there's no speaking, it's going to boost the volume back up. So this is another cool feature that LumaFusion includes. And there's also a ton of effects and control that you can have over how your audio sounds in here as well, or that you can use to fix up your audio as well to have it sounding better. So now that you've got your audio levels sorted, next up we're going to color grade or color correct our clips. So I like to start on the first clip here and we're gonna double tap on that. We're gonna come across to the last setting down the bottom here, color and effects. And in here, as with everything LumaFusion, there is a ton of presets that are here. So you don't need to start from absolute zero. So if you find that there is an effect or a preset here that matches the look that you're after, by all means, you can use that. Or you can use it as a starting point to then dive into the settings below it and customize it up from there. But you don't need to start from scratch. And that's pretty cool. So up here at the top, you've also got LUTs that you can apply, lookup tables. Also got motion blur and things that you can apply on here as well. So let's pick one of these. We can customize up the angle of the blur, the amount of blur, and each one of these effects that you're applying, they actually show up on their own layer. So we can hide them, we can turn them on and off, we can delete them. So you have the ability in here to stack your effects as well. And in terms of green screen or chroma key, then you've got those effects on the end here. So I'm gonna go back to the color area. I'm going to remove our vibrance template here, preset. So we'll go back to the start and then over to original. So we've got nothing else applied. The first thing I'm gonna do here is adjust the brightness slider to brighten it up or to darken it down a little bit, depending on what's needed. I then come down to the shadow amount and I'd be adjusting the blacks. You can see that we can brighten up the blacks so we can darken them down a bit. So I'm gonna drop them off a little bit here. Then if I need to tweak the colors, I'd be looking primarily first off at this blue slider. So if we wanted to warm up the shot a little bit, we can go across into yellow, obviously not too far. Uh, likewise, if we wanted to cool it down a little, we can add more blue by going the other way. Um, again, they're just talking minor adjustments here. Now, for any time you wanna check the difference between what you've applied and where the original was, is you can come back up the top here and press on the little I. So this is before, this is after. So you're already just subtle little adjustment. And from there too, I like to add a little bit more vibrance usually as well, boost some of the colors. Again, we don't wanna to go too overboard. And again, let's have a look at a before and after, before, after. Once we're happy with that, you will want to save this as a preset by hitting that star with the plus in it. Let's call this uh, JB for this one and save this as a preset so that next time we don't need to come back in here and make all those adjustments again. Now from here, you could go into the next clip and apply that manually and then the next clip and so on, or you can actually apply them to a bunch of clips at once. So let's select this first clip here. Let's come down the bottom to the picture of the clipboard and let's choose copy. Now, if we scrub across here till we're on the next clip and we press the little checkbox here, then we can either manually select multiple clips that we want to apply these effects to, or you can see up in the top here, we've now got those handles back. So we've already picked our first clip and that's marked an in point here. We can drag this white clip here, this white marker to the end and that's going to select all of those remaining clips. You can see now they are all selected. Now, if we don't want to select our top B-roll clips, then we can just lock that layer. So we can come across and press the little lock and they are now deselected. And then to paste our effects onto these remaining clips, we can come down to the little clipboard again. And then in here we get to choose which effects do we want to paste based on what we've copied from this first clip. So I'm gonna turn them all off 
except for the color one here, because we might have other effects and things applied or some of those zoom in effects. We don't wanna overwrite those. So we're just gonna paste here the color effects. We're gonna choose paste and those are now applied to all our remaining clips. So again, this is the stuff that you normally only see on desktop video editing software. So it's so awesome we've got this on iPhone and iPad as well. So you wanna go ahead and you wanna color grade or color correct all of your footage, including your B-roll clips as well. And when you're done, the next step is to save out your video. So you want to come down to this little export button here, and then you want to choose movie. And then you can choose where your file is going to save. Is it going to save into your photos area? Do you want to directly upload it to YouTube or to Vimeo? Personally, I just choose photos so that I can then have it saved on my device, but also still upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or wherever else I want it to go after that. So I'm going to choose photos. Now the default settings here that LumaFusion pulls in are normally based on that first video clip that you've imported and your project settings as well. So for most most people you'll find that these settings here are going to be fine. But obviously you can jump in and you can customize everything up in here as well. So if you don't want to export a 4K file, we could just come in here and select 1080p. Once you're ready, you just press the little share button at the top here and it's going to go ahead and save out your video. Once that's done, you want to preview it. You want to play it back, ideally on a couple of different devices, play it with headphones on, make sure you're happy with how it looks and sounds, and then you're good to release it into the wild. So that's a complete editing walkthrough using LumaFusion. Now, earlier in the video, I said I'd also share with you my top three tools to help you level up your video creation in LumaFusion or in any other video application too. So tool number one is creating animated graphics or an animated video intro to use in all your videos. Now, this isn't something where you need to go and learn how to create this stuff from scratch. I'm a massive fan of a service called Placeit, which really lets you generate these in a matter of minutes. It's literally a matter of scrolling through, finding a template that you like the look of and then customizing it up to match your fonts, your colors, and your brand. I'll also put a link up in the cards where you can check out our full video on Placeit and check out some of the amazing stuff that you can create in there. Tool number two is using stock music in your videos. Music will really help your viewers engage with your videos on a deeper level, helping you dictate what your viewers should be feeling when they're watching your videos. Now there's lots of different places you can go to get music for your videos, but if you're not going to the right places, you could have copyright issues or you could have a hard time trying to find the right music tracks for your videos. And that's why my top two recommendations are Artlist and Epidemic Sound when it comes to finding the right music fast and easy, all while making the licensing and everything really simple. And tool number three is using stock footage, stock B-roll, stock overlay footage in your videos. This again can help your viewers engage with your videos on a deeper level by showing them a lot more than just a talking head video like this. You're able to create much more engaging content without needing to go and film everything yourself. Now, when it comes to stock footage, my top two recommended sites are Storyblocks and Artgrid. Storyblocks is probably my favorite all-rounder, and that's where we go first when we're looking for stock footage for our YouTube videos. But Artgrid's got some amazing stuff as well, and it's probably more on the cinematic and more filmic side. And again, both of these two make the whole licensing thing really, really straightforward as well. So now that you know how to edit in LumaFusion, you've got your your animated intro, your stock music, and your stock footage sorted, don't forget to download your copy of our Primal Video Editing Method, the most efficient way to edit your videos down with minimal wasted time and rework, no matter which app or program you're using. There's a link to grab your copy on screen right now, and I'll see you in the next one.